Hey everybody, Dylan Reich here. Now just quickly, some people are not aware that on my website I do have an online course available. It's called the Dylan Reich Songbook and it's where I teach you how to play several of my songs. In fact, the most voted for songs that people wanted to learn. And this week I just added five brand new songs to the series, so that's very exciting. You can check this all out at dylanreich.com slash songbook if you're interested. Now, just coming up in a few moments, I wanted to give you an excerpt of some of these lessons. This video comes from the Toronto Sky series of lessons, one of, I think, 10 videos in that series. And even though this video is a little bit different than most of the others, I liked this one because it really works as a standalone lesson in this format right here. So without any further ado, here's a look inside the Dylan Reich songbook, Toronto Sky series. Check it out. Hello and welcome back. Now I did mention in the last video that this one was going to be a little bit different, which is why we're sitting here at the computer. So one of the most important things, one thing that I think is going to really, really help you to not only play this song, but to play any song and to just make you a better musician and a better guitar player is your ability to hear and think horizontally and not just vertically, okay? Now, if that makes no sense, don't worry because that's why we're here, right? So let's go over to Guitar Pro and I'll explain it for you. So. Here we have the Toronto Sky transcription that we've been following along with, and we're at verse three, which is what we just did. Now, I wanna draw your attention to bars 57 and 58, just because they're a good example of what I'm about to talk about. Uh, first, let's just listen to them and re-familiarize ourselves with what this sounds like. Okay, very cool. So here is what I mean by vertical, okay? I mean the vertical alignment of notes. So let's look at the tab, for example, okay? First, we have zero, three, zero, all vertically stacked on top of each other, right? So that means we play them all at the same time, okay? So we do that. Then we move over here and you can see a zero and a four vertically stacked on top of each other again. So then we do that. Then we have an X. And then after that, we have these two notes, again, vertically stacked on top of each other. Okay. So this is a very typical way that somebody will interpret the transcription. They read from left to right in this kind of vertical manner. Now, what I want to draw your attention to here is this may look like a whole jumble of notes, right? Just notes everywhere. Some of them are at the same time, some of them are not. It's just left to right, notes, 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 notes. So what I've done here is if I go over to this other session that I created, I wrote out bars 57 and 58 that we just listened to as a four-part arrangement, right? So we have one, two, three, four parts. And this is the way you would write a four-part vocal harmony, perhaps a, a four-part string section, any kind of arrangement or ensemble that has four parts. So for the sake of uh, this exercise, we're going to imagine that we have a band of four people that are going to play this song, okay? And they've each got their own horizontal line, right? So again, here's vertical. See, these three notes are all going to happen at the same time, along with this rest. That's the vertical way of looking at it. Horizontal is we have this line and this line and this line. They're distinct musical lines going along at the same time. 
Okay, so let's take a listen to our, our band here, our little ensemble. We'll go through it so you can hear it. So this is our percussionist. So here's our percussion part. You can see it's really simple. There's a rest, then a hit on beat two, another rest, and then a hit on beat four. So we're really just accenting beats two and four, and it sounds like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, pretty simple. Let's go up here to our bass line. So this is what our hypothetical bass player is going to play. Again, it's really just, it's just one note. But here's the rhythm of it. Rest. Boom, boom, boom. Rest. Okay. Let's check out our bass and percussionist together. This is our rhythm section. It goes like this. All right. Pretty cool. Now, let's go right up to the top here to our melody. Okay. This is, this is the tune, right? This is the bit you would sing, the, the part you would hum or whistle. If this song had lyrics, this is the part you would sing them along to, right? This is our melody. Let's take a listen to how the melody goes. Now remember, I'm just looping this two bar phrase, so the melody does change after two bars, but you get the idea. And I've got this other voice here. I've called it, I've labeled it middle voice, but it's a kind of a counter melody. And let's take a listen to what that sounds like. Okay. So before we go any further, let's take a listen to what our whole fictitious band sounds like when they all play their parts at the same time. Let's check it out. Okay, it sounds like the song, right? Because that's what we're trying to play. We're trying to play the musical lines, melody, harmony, arrangement, song form, musical things, right? Sometimes we get so lost in the guitar stuff, fingers, frets, and, and stretches, and guitar things, that we have to stop and remember to zoom out. And remember, we're trying to play music. We're not just trying to play the seventh fret or something. We're trying to play music, right? So understanding the musical landscape, the of what is happening, the architecture of how this is put together is so important, okay? Because when you can hear the melody, when you hear it and you understand what it is and hear the different parts, it means we can start to control them, okay? If we need to bring the melody a little bit forward, we can do that because we know that in this jumble of notes. We know which notes are the melody. We can bring those ones forward, but not the other ones. We can connect these notes, say the melody, in a cohesive musical voice, perhaps put them in their own tonal space. Like maybe we want this part to have a brighter tone and this other part to not. Those kind of things, right? We can control the music if we can hear it. And if we can't hear it, it's virtually impossible to control. An analogy for this is storytelling. Okay, so imagine you're telling a story. It can be any story, let's say Goldilocks and the Three Bears, okay? But if you know how the story goes, right, you know the general sequence of events. You know what's the beginning, what's the middle, what's the end. You know who the characters are. You know what they look like. You know what kind of personality each of them may have. You know what voice they may have. You know the scenery. Where's the story set, right? You know the beginning, middle, and end. When you know those kinds of things, 
it is so much easier to tell the story, right? Because you know it, right? So you could tell the story and you could, as you're telling it, you will naturally accent certain words. You will naturally leave a pause in certain places. You could put on a different voice for each character. You know where the climax of the story is, where you want to build more suspense, all those kind of things, right? Because you, you can tell the story in a human, engaging way because you understand the elements inside this story, okay? So contrast that with imagine if I didn't know any of those things, okay? All I knew is it's a bunch of words. Like imagine it's in a foreign language and I didn't know any of the words were different to each other. And I would just read from left to right. Once upon a time, Goldilocks went walking through the da 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 da, right? You see the difference? Even though in both cases I may be saying the same words in the same order, one, I understand what I'm saying and I can control it and be a part of it and express it more clearly. And the other one, it's like a foreign language and I'm just going left to right and hoping for the best. Music is the exact same way. If I don't know which part is the melody, which part is the harmony, what the dynamics are, if I don't know all these kind of, kind of things, it's so much harder to play because I don't really know what I'm trying to play. But if I can hear the melody and I can hear the bass line and I know the harmony and I can hear the dynamics, first of all, the dynamics between notes in a line, then the dynamics between one line and another musical voice, and then the dynamics between this whole section and the section before the section after it, etc. throughout a song, the general energy curve, like the general story arc, you know, the form of the song, that's what we call it, the form. If I understand those kind of things, then I promise you that playing the song, the physical guitar part of it, is going to be about 10,000 times easier, right? Because we're just, we know what it's supposed to sound like and we just can work towards it. If we don't know those things, it becomes much more challenging, right? So the moral of this whole story, again, is that sometimes we get so in the weeds of, and we should do this too, right? We need to, to practice the, the technique, but sometimes we get so in the weeds of this, this stretch and where is my thumb and is it the seventh fret and what finger is here and all the stuff that we need to take a moment once in a while to zoom out and actually hear the music. Like, what are we trying to say? Okay, so a good way to practice this is to sing. This is something that as the years go by, I've been doing increasingly more with my students because singing is something that you just cannot fake. <laughs> I should say, this has got nothing to do with can you sing? Are you a good singer? We're not concerned here with tone and breath support and all the rest of it. This is simply can you hear the note, right? Because if you can sing it, it means you can hear it. And if you can hear it, you can control it on an instrument, guitar in our case, okay? So uh, if I go back to our uh, transcription here, if I was gonna play this song, an exercise might be, can you sing the melody? Can you hear it? Can you hum the melody, whistle the melody, whatever, right? Can we hear the parts like this? <laughs> Okay, and then can we hear the middle voice? Try something else. Right? Try the bass line. Okay? Can you hear it? Again, if you can sing it, you can hear it, and if you can hear it, you can control it.